All right, let me start off by saying that I really hope people are wrong about this one. And the reason I say that is not because I don't like Eloy Casagrande. I think he's a phenomenal drummer. But my favorite thing about Slipknot and their members is that most of the time, people are clueless. And I really do like the surprise factor of the way they operate. Uh, a few months ago, Slipknot took everyone by surprise when they fired Jay Weinberg and have been for many years now with multiple members leaving the band. And for those who don't know, Eloy Casagrande unexpectedly quit Sepultura without any notice right before they started the first leg of their final tour. So I don't know how much you saw on that or what your thoughts are so far. Yeah, I was reading into that, and, and I mean, there's really a lot to unpack. I mean, I guess going back to your, your initial thing of, you know, you like the surprise element, and, and they, uh, you know, they don't really announce their members and stuff. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, you know, there's also this whole thing of, like, you know, Jay Weinberg. They bring in guys that don't really have fan bases, uh, who uh, Alessandro or whatever. I mean, he was just a tech V man or whatever. Um, you know, but I think, uh, I don't think Eloy is really necessarily that well known. I think he's well known to people, you know, in the metal community, but at the same time, you know, Slipknot's like a total mainstream band. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure how many, how many people of, of the general Slipknot audience are even aware of him. And at the same time, I would say, you know, Jay also had, a little bit of a, of a built-in name when, when he started. I mean, with obviously his dad playing for Bruce Springsteen, Jay himself played for Bruce, uh, Madball against me, all that kind of stuff. You know, so, you know, I don't know. But uh, I, my opinion is I, I, I do think Eloy will be the new Slipknot drummer. Yeah, and speaking of you saying that, you know, Eloy is well-known but not well-known at the same time, and I, I see what you're saying because some people have said, well, he's already in a, su a successful band. You know, and um, it just depends on how you look at that. You know, that might be successful to some people, while Slipknot is a completely other level of success. But what I was going to say is that, you know, in my opinion, Sepultura really made Eloy who he is. And what I mean by that is that's kind of how everyone knows him. And I'm not extremely familiar with his, you know, history, but he is a, a, a young guy. And, you know, he started playing with Sepultura in his early 20s, I believe. But, you know, he's been with uh, Sepultura for 13 years now. And he got his name, in my opinion, um, you know, from playing with Sepultura. And, you know, everyone knows he's a phenomenal drummer, but I don't think he would be, you know, maybe with the way things are with YouTube and all that, maybe he would eventually found the gig. But, you know, I don't think, I think he owes a lot to them for, you know, making a name for himself, you know. And he, he left without notice, which in my opinion is very unprofessional, um, you know, and he has to have good reason for it, which, you know, we'll get into that speculation later. But yeah, to leave them, you know, after 13 years with them and what they did for his name, that's pretty unexpected, unprofessional, however you want to look at it, for him to do that to them literally, I don't know, a few days, a week maybe before the tour starts, you know, and, and looking at what happened to Jay Weinberg, he did the same thing with uh, his band against me. He up and left and, you know, he didn't explain why and eventually they found out, but yeah, the same thing happened with Jay. So it's just weird to see that the same thing is kind of happening with Eloy. So, you know, I think people are onto something here. I didn't even put two and two together and, and, and make that comparison, which is a great point. And, and uh, when Jay uh, left Slipknot or got tossed from the band really a few months back, I remember, um, well, when, when uh, Jay first left against me, however long that was, 12, 13 years ago, maybe even more, I remember there was a lot of drama and, and Laura Jane Grace is making all these uh, this this whole series of, of somewhat nasty tweets directed at Jay. And then when he was out of the band just a few months ago, she made another tweet. I forget what it said. But uh, so, yeah, no, I, I didn't even think about that. But no, I mean, it is absolutely fucked up because I, I don't really think there's any arguing with what you said. Uh, yeah, Eloy is like 33 years old. He joined Sepultura when he was like 20. So, yeah, I mean, he, he, arguably, I mean, that that is why everybody knows him is, is for Sepultura. And I think the bigger kick in the face, at least to me, is that this is uh, uh, Sepultura's, you know, quote-unquote farewell tour, you know? And it's like, dude, this is it, you know? this is. I mean, look, as always, like, you know, the whole Slayer thing, you can never believe when a band says they're they're going away. But at the same time, it is their farewell tour. They've got a bunch of dates coming up. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it is fucked up, especially like you said, getting your name and, and that's, that's where people know you from. And then you bail on them at the very last second. I mean, I don't know when that, that tour starts soon, I think, 
Um, you know, obviously they already have a new drummer, some uh, some guy, Grayson something. I think he's from the U.S. But, yeah, no, it, it is fucked up, especially with the, with it being a, a farewell tour. It makes it even more of a slap in the face to me. Yeah, no, that, that tour is starting really soon because I saw photos of them rehearsing. And I, I, I don't know the dates either, but um, I'll put them on the screen here, you know, once I find them. But, yeah, I think it is starting really soon because they're already doing rehearsals. But, you know, people were saying that, like, you know, he's quitting and it's just one last tour. And, you know, there was both sides of that. They were like, well, it's just one more tour. He has, you know, a career to think about here. And people are like, well, why couldn't he just finish one more tour? And it, it is one more tour, but it's really one more tour cycle. You know, they're doing different legs in different parts of the world. It's not just one more tour. It's not like he would have you know, had, you know, six weeks of touring and then he was going to be done. From my understanding, it's multiple tours across the course of the next year or so, you know, so that's not really something as simple as like if if Slipknot wanted to let him leave, you know, do the proper exit, it's not like he could be like, well, can you get a fill in for these festivals and then I'll be the permanent member later on in the year. There's a lot of touring coming up that I think uh, needs to be planned for. You know, but everyone's just so confident that it's him, you know. I mean, people have made videos and statements and stuff, and all over the comments, people are just like, it's him, it's him, you know. And, like, people like, you know, um, Estepario, I'm sure you know who he is, that uh, bearded drummer who's got, like, 3 million followers. I'm sure you've seen him. He made a, a whole video just on, like, saying it's 100% him. And then he's like, what's funny is he's just like, and if I'm wrong for any reason, he's like, I am a human, a human being. He's like, I like doing mushrooms and weed. So (laughs) just excuse me. I I thought that was a great way to just kind of cover up in case he is wrong. But that leads me to my point is that I kind of, you know, I love the fact that like people never know what Slipknot's doing. And I kind of want to see people's reactions, you know, if, and when they do uh, reveal, which they won't really reveal, but when people figure out that it's not Eloy for, you know, in case it's not, you know, I kind of just want to see, what people have to say because everyone's just so confident and you know i I get it i mean there's a lot of signs pointing to him you know being the drummer but yeah i mean everyone just thinks they they have it all all figured out and everyone knows that slipknot never announces new members they i don't think they ever have you know uh, all the way back to you know v man and jay they just kind of they put them out there and they let people figure it out and that's the way it's been with michael faff that's the way it's been with you know, whoever Craig's, Craig's replacement is, you know, we still haven't 100% confirmed that. I mean, I still think it's Zach, but they say it's not. You know, going back to to the whole farewell thing and, and all that. I mean, to to quit something that you've been such that you've been a big part of for so long, and to quit it at the very end. I mean, it would have to be a, a pretty massive deal. I mean, you're not going to quit just for some old fucking you know some other club band or fucking theater band or whatever. You know, I mean, to, to really break that commitment, uh, because I think when Sepultura announced their farewell uh, a few months ago, uh, they, they made this whole video, and I think he was a part of that, and and, all that, and that was, like, right after Jay had, had uh, been out of Slipknot, like, a few weeks or something afterwards. So, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, to me, it, it does make the most sense, uh, because, uh, you know, you wouldn't quit unless it was something major. And and going back to uh, Estepario, I watched that video, uh, I did think it was interesting that he mentioned that he felt that um, Eloy is more capable, he said, than both Joey and Jay, which I thought uh, I thought that was a very bold declaration to make. And no, that is not to mention the history that comes with uh, Joey's playing. You know, every, everyone kind of divides his career into two parts. You know, the first half, you know, the first few albums versus you know what he did become. But I mean, Joey's you know historically just always voted one of the best drummers whether you know people want to agree with that or not he he just he was a very innovative drummer i will say and one of my favorite drummers of all time jay went in and filled his spot um got a little bit a little bit of heat in the beginning doing it but he did a phenomenal job and you know people thought that no one could ever replace joey there would never be a good enough replacement and then uh, along comes jay and really kind of uh shut people up with that but I wanted to get into some of the reasons that I think, you know, it might not be true or that it couldn't work. And I don't want to say it couldn't work. Like, it's not like he's not capable, but just might not be the right fit. But one of the things is that, like, people just jump to conclusions so fast. And the reason I say that is because everyone, do you remember the confidence everyone had just a few months ago when this whole thing with Jeremy Kling was going on? And people were, like, nonchalantly, like, in the comments, like, 
we pretty much already know it's Jeremy Kling. Like, let's just stop all the nonsense. And it's like, okay, so what happened to all that? You know, like everyone was so confident that it was Jeremy Kling because he did whatever he did with social media and got everyone riled up. And then all it takes is one little thing like that. And and everyone's just so confident in Tim. So I, I do think that a lot more things line up with this one. But my point is that like, you were just so sure it was Jeremy a few months ago, and now everyone is just so sure again that it's Eloy. So that, it's just that's just my point is that it, people just everyone thinks they got it all figured out all the time. Well, and and it really was a, a similar situation with Jeremy Kling as it is with uh, with Eloy because now Eloy's leaving Sepultura for an unannounced project, and at the time Jeremy had just left uh, Venom Inc. So. You know, it, it really is the same situation. That's a good point. Uh, you know, and when, when all that stuff first came out about it, you know, there was there was some stuff. I don't remember the specifics now, but, you know, there was some stuff about it that kind of made sense. But then at the same time, it's just like, you know, I just, I, I, I never, I guess, really saw that guy playing for Slipknot. Nothing against him. I mean, like, I, I'm not a drummer, but I'm sure he's a great drummer. But, uh you know, I, I just, I, I, I that, it just doesn't strike me as a guy that would be, uh, be in Slipknot. Yeah, and I, I'm, I personally know Jeremy. Um, I, I toured with him in 2017 when, when, uh, we were with Venom Inc. He wasn't in the band yet, but he was doing, uh, front of house audio for them. And, um, uh, yeah, I haven't seen him too many times over the years, but uh, we do still know each other and message each other from time to time. And I didn't even think about asking him. I mean, I, I just. Yeah, it wasn't the first. That's not what I thought was happening. I, I just thought he was messing around and doing whatever just to kind of stir things up, which is fine. But yeah, I mean, it, like that—that that is a good point too that I hadn't thought about is that he had just quit Venom Inc. and it—it it just kind of goes with my point that like, you know, the timing just because things line up doesn't mean that that you know it is what it may seem. You know, for example, you know, Phil Demel just left left Violence and joined Carrie King, and everyone. Even me on that episode, you know, we that we talked about on the podcast, we talked about how well because he's joining uh, Kerry King's band, he's leaving Violence. But he, la I later found out right after we filmed that that that's not the case. He, you know, maybe over time that's kind of what happened. But he did say that he's been in Kerry King's band for, you know, he's been he's known this for four years, while the the plan to leave uh, Violence has been for about the last year. So yes, maybe he could have said you know, and thought about it over time and said, well, I'm about to start this new project. You know, maybe it's best I leave, but who knows? There might be other internal reasons. But my point is that, like, he even said himself, I'm not leaving violence because of Kerry King's ban. I'm leaving it for my own other reasons. So that just goes with, you know, with uh, that whole thing of just just because it lines up does not mean that it's going to be the exactly what you think. No, 100%. And, and it's honestly kind of funny how Jeremy Kling tie, uh, ties into all this, too, I wanted to say, because... When I met him, he was tour managing Sepultura, uh, so it's, oh, it's yeah. uh, he he really he really uh, looped into this whole thing. But <laughs> no, I, I mean, you know, timing is everything, and and yeah, I mean, it, it is very possible that he's not going to get the gig. Uh, but I don't know; it, it does make sense, and you know, I mean, same thing with Phil Demel. I mean, I would argue that Kerry King's band, even though there's no proven history, I mean. His new band, of course, is going to be bigger than Violence. I mean, Violence is a club band. They're not going to end up on a fucking Lamb of God Mastodon tour. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I mean, I, I just I can't imagine a, a scenario where Eloy leaves to join something. Uh, I mean, to me, it would have to be something massive, you know. But th there's so many unknowns, I guess. And, and I mean, God only knows how long it'll take to figure this out. I guess if – does he still have short hair? Maybe when Slipknot plays their first show – uh, although knowing them, they'll probably they'll probably put them with a mask with long hair to throw everybody <laughs> off the scent, you know. So yeah. who really knows? I, I think that's one of Slipknot's favorite things to do, and that's just what I, I love about it. I love the fact that people have to try to figure out who's there, and it, I think it's just a fun thing that that goes on whenever they replace any member. But you know, more reasons that I think um, that this might not be true and or might not work, however you want to look at it, is just because. As you touched on this earlier, Slipknot doesn't hire well-known people. They never have. Every time that you know they uh, uh, they lose a member and they bring somebody in, it's always somebody that it takes some figuring out to do. It's not like you can just take one look at him 
and and know who it is right away. You know, uh, with Michael Pfaff, you know, it was somebody that Clown worked with previously in one of his other projects. And then with Jay Weinberg, like you said, he was well known, but in a completely different way, you know, through his dad and playing drums for Bruce Springsteen and all that kind of stuff. He was in smaller bands. He wasn't really a big name, quote unquote, you know, and then same thing with Zach. If it is Zach, you know, he was uh, from what I what I understand, he he played with Corn, but he was more like a behind the scenes kind of uh, auxiliary player, you know, that was kind of there only for live shows. And same thing with V-Man. V-Man is, a, I believe, a guitar tech for Mastodon. He did have his own bands as well, but like I said, very small, very underground, maybe club-sized bands. But, you know, he was a guitar tech. I don't know if he ever guitar tech for Slipknot, but he was guitar tech for, for Mastodon. And that's my point is that they just never bring, you know, big names to their band. And I think there's a reason behind that. Um, I don't know if it's just because of money reasons or or ego reasons i really don't know but that's just one more thing that i wanted to touch on with you know members that they bring into their band yeah so are you saying that you feel that that eloy is is too big of a name to be brought into slipknot i think obviously like we talked about earlier not too big to the point that he's you know in one of the biggest bands ever but he is very well known for example when you know as soon as Jay was let go, there was speculation of who it could be. And he was always in the list of top five, top three, top 10 or whatever lists of people who could make it. So I just think that's just not in Slipknot fashion. I'm not saying that they won't do it. I'm just saying that it's just not how things have gone historically. But as we just said too, Slipknot likes to surprise people. So who knows, maybe they could throw a curveball and, and, it will just be him, you know, even though they've never really gotten anybody that's well known. But another thing that I was going to point out is I don't know, you know, I just noted here that the the versatility uh, of Eloy, I mean, everyone knows he beats the shit out of his drums, you know, and Slipknot, you know, that's one of the things you see in, in all the comments is like, damn, this guy hits hard and he does. I mean, he's a great drummer, but Slipknot has some, you know, slower, softer songs and, you, you know, there's just, they require some dynamics and, you know, um, just a little bit more versatility. And I'm not saying he can't do that, but we haven't seen that. I feel like every time I see him, he's just beating the shit out of his drums. But that's just where I'm at with where, where I think the the style and fit go for, you know, for Slipknot. I know you said you're not a drummer, but I thought the same thing about Jeremy Kling. Whenever I, I know Jeremy's style and I know Slipknot's style, and that's just not the first thing I thought of whenever I, I heard about, you know, Eloy or Jeremy. Well, again, I'm not a musician, so I can't speak to the technicality. But, you know, I did before we did this, I did watch a couple of um, Eloy's uh, playthroughs on YouTube of uh, uh, People Equal Shit and uh, the Heretic Anthem. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me as a non-musician, as a fan, you know, I, I thought it sounded great. I, I think uh, from what I've seen, you know, he could do, uh, you know, he'd be a good fit. But again, I'm not a drummer, but uh, those playthroughs were uh, were pretty impressive and I think the the uh, amount of views on those videos speak for themselves too. That's true, and I, I it's funny that you watched those because I did the same thing yesterday, um, looking into this whole thing, and I'm sure a lot of people did because there was a lot of fresh comments in there. But yeah, no, he can play all of the all the heavy songs without a, without a problem and nail them no <laughs> problem. Um, but yeah, it's it's more just the I you know I think the writing and maybe the playing of the softer stuff, but I'm sure he can handle it no problem at all. And I'm sure many people will will agree that he can. And Slipknot will likely, if it is him, you know, mold him into what they need him to be. And I think that goes along with, you know, why I was saying earlier about them not getting well-known people is I think they do want to mold them into what they need, what they need in the band. They need somewhat of a backseat member, so to speak. You know, they need somebody who's not going to, you know, come out and be like demanding things with an ego and all sorts of things and try to take the spotlight. And that was one of the, you know, things that I thought about with Jay. I was like, you know, something, I don't remember what made me think about it, but I was like, I don't know, maybe his ego got in the way over the years. Something just told me that. And I don't remember if it was you or somebody else that thought maybe uh, that might be the same reason. But I just think that that's why, you know, they they don't go with well-known people is they just want to mold them into what they need. Well, and, and Eloy would certainly be the guy for that because I'm sure it was a similar uh situation in sepultura i mean that band's been around since the 80s and here comes here comes this young guy you know 25 plus years into their career i'm sure that guy wasn't making a whole lot of decisions uh behind the scenes so uh, in a business capacity he's probably a great fit because it's probably no different than what he's used to already 
Yeah, that's true. You know, coming from, like you said, not not doing very much to being in Sepultura, that's probably exactly what happened. But, you know, some of the reasons that it might be true and that it might work, I think there's a lot more things leading to why it is true than it isn't true is, you know, like I said earlier, he left without any notice. And the only reason, you know, in my opinion would be because, like you said, he, it's not you're not going to switch on one band that you've been with for 13 years to go to another club band or another theater band and um, just to do something of equal or lesser level. So it's, you know, the opportunity must have been good for him to go. So I think as we looked at the tours, you know, when whenever they first got announced that Jay was let let go and we were looking at the way things line up with Eloy, there was way too many Sepultura tours that were overlapping with Slipknot tours. And I think everyone like ruled it out right away. They were like, he can't. There's no way he can do it because his sepultura has got uh, tours to do. And I think everyone just immediately assumed that he's not going to quit Sepultura. Like, I think that's what uh, that's why it was such a huge, huge surprise. So that I think that's why people are are believing that he really is the replacement because it, it it's just way too much of a coincidence. So I do think that there is something there with the tours lining up. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, like we talked about earlier, it, it would you would think it would have to be another, ma or, you know, a massive project to leave that, uh, to leave Sepultura. But on the flip side, I guess kind of playing devil's advocate, I mean, you could also look at it, though, as like, you know, maybe something did come up where there was a, a more permanent long-term gig, even if it was just at the uh, club theater level. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if he would have stayed with Sepultura, uh, I mean, you know, yeah, maybe they'll come back eventually in, in five, six years or whatever, but... He's also a young guy. I mean, he doesn't have, uh, I'm sure he's not filthy rich and he doesn't have this crazy back catalog where he's getting royalties and all that. He's still got to work. And you know what I mean? So it's also possible that, that something a little more stable, a little more permanent uh, came along. And, and that's why, you know, he made the move too. I mean, Slipknot still makes the most sense, but that is another way to look at it too. I mean, the guy's got to keep his bills paid. Yeah, and a lot of people were were doing that, defending him, you know, on these posts, saying that the band's done. He's got to move on. He's got to do what's right for him. But I, I get it, you know. Um, you, you're right. I mean, he he probably doesn't, you know, the dude's not filthy rich, most likely, um, from playing in Sepultura, you know. So he's got to do something that's going to be for the long term, you know, even if it means leaving Sepultura behind. Obviously, he did it. Um, I don't know. Curious to know how much he thought about it, the decision before he made it, but. I would hope that, you know, it, it's for the right thing and that if he's going to leave, it's for a, an opportunity as, as big as Slipknot. But, you know, you said he's young, and that's exactly what I was going to point out as well. Uh, Jay Weinberg was in his early 20s when he started with Slipknot, and, you know, Eloy was in his early 20s when he started with Sepultura, and I think that just goes along with what they're looking for as well, you know, which it might be a fit. You know, it's more of the reason why it might be a fit because he's – He's young, and I think they want younger members. There's no reason to replace him with a guy almost that's nearly 50 because, you know, most of the guys are, are getting to their 50. So I do think that's one more reason that that they could definitely be going with him. Yeah, I think their their first show is, I don't know, within a couple of months. So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure as soon as that happens, people are going to be fucking watching all the footage they can and there's going to be Reddit threads about it, and they're going to be speculating. Oh, it's this guy, it's oh, that yeah. guy. Look at look at his tattoo, or look at look at that 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 little spot on his facial hair. I mean, that looks just like so and so. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to turn into this whole fucking thing. Oh so yeah. That, that that to me, that's like the most exciting thing is is w when they actually play and there's actually footage and, and the, these crazy ideas that people come up with. You know. Yeah, that that's what I love is is people trying to figure it out. I just think it's kind of kind of fun to to see what people's uh you know guesses are and and what how they think it could or could not be possible. But I'm pretty sure these you know if they're headlining some of these festivals they got coming up, they're going to be closed stage. You know, I'm sure things are going to be on lockdown, and I would just imagine that they're already preparing for that. You know, because people are going to be trying to figure it out. And and I don't know. I mean, who knows how well they're going to hide it or not, but. Well, like I said in one of the episodes of the podcast, um, you know, I, I I've done some of these festivals. I haven't done any with Slipknot yet, so I, I don't know how they act. I don't know if they're you know how they are behind the scenes and all that. But that is just going to be an interesting time whenever they they do play these festivals coming up. But I did want to point out that the difference between Jay and Eloy is that Jay came in and he he was following you know the the departure of Joey Jordison, who was 
a huge face in the band and a huge, you know, like I said, voted one of the best drummers and people's favorite drummers to this people's favorite drummer to this day, excuse me. And, you know, he had big shoes to fill. And, you know, people were going to hate on anybody who got in that seat. And it, it, it took Jay some time to earn people's respect and to make a name for himself. And before you knew it, people were making videos where, you know, Joey versus Jay all over YouTube and saying some people even saying Jay was better. And, you know, my point is that Eloy already has fan support going into Slipknot if it's him. People have already recommended him. People are saying it's him. People want him to get the gig. So that's a big difference in the switching of the roles here that Jay had a tougher time in the beginning having to fight and earn his spot where, like, Eloy, everyone already feels he deserves it. Well, and, and maybe uh, if, if he does turn out to be the guy, maybe maybe that's a part of the reason why Slipknot wanted to bring him in because I think after the last couple of years, they certainly uh, are trying to get back in the good graces of, of their fans to some, to, to some extent. No, a hundred percent. Um, I was going to mention that as well, that, you know, for the way things are going for Slipknot, this really could turn things around in, in one way or another, you know, things could, this, it could be a positive or a negative. I, I don't know, depending on what they decide to do, depending on who the new drummer is. But I do think if they were to get Eloy, I honestly think it would please a lot of fans. I think people would feel like, well, this is a little bit of a resurgence for the band, but I don't know. We'll see. Everyone's divided on on every single subject, and that's just the way it's always going to be, you know. But he has the support from the fans. He's a phenomenal drummer. I'm sure he can do it no problem. I do wish him the best if he gets the gig, you know. There's no reason I I don't want to see him get it, you know. Um, so I, if it is him, then everyone was right, and uh, hopefully we can get some new Slipknot music uh, sooner than later, you know, that people are a little bit more fond of because, you know, that last album, no re nobody really talks about it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, no, I think it's not about good. <laughs> I think it's about time Slipknot turns things around, and and hopefully the the fans do as well. I'm saying yes, he's going to be the new guy. I mean, what are you saying, yes or no? If you just had to throw it out there and just say it, I'm saying it's him, but I don't want it to be only because I just like this game <laughs> of of I, I want Slipknot to throw like a massive curveball because they, you know that they're loving this and that they're watching every move. Even when Jeremy put out his little hints that he was, uh, in the band. I mean, he was using little hashtags like I'm in the band or I am the one, or I don't remember what he said. And Corey Taylor responded with a hashtag in response to that. So, you know, that they're watching, even though they don't want to, everybody knows what's going on. And Slipknot are the only ones that know Slipknot and their management, their team, you know, are the ones that know what's going on. And it just, you know, I'm sure they're having fun with it, and um, I would just love it if they just hired some dude that doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure. Uh, I guess we only have to wait like 60 days or so until uh, we can start making some some real accurate uh, guesses. So I guess we'll see what happens. Yep, definitely excited about that. If you want to see more discussions like this, be sure to check out the Take Me on Tour podcast, which will be linked in the description, or visit TakeMeOnTour.com. Thanks for watching.